peace, love, tolerance, acceptance. Long ago, these four virtues lived together in Star Trek. Then, everything changed when the Berman era died. Only a Trekkie, master of all four elements, could have stopped this. But when Faith of the Heart came on, they vanished. Twelve years passed and CBS Studios discovered a new producer, a man named Alex. And although his visual work is great, he still has a lot to learn before he's ready to write Star Trek. But I believe McMahon can save the world. Excitable young woman shows up for first day at new job, has liaison overwritten, an unhelpful tour cut short, is non-consensually thrust into a room of naked men, has boss turned into mindless zombies, is forced to keep a man's heart pumping with her bare hands, and has workplace overrun by riot. Ends day with, I got to hold a heart! I love Tendi. And later, Ensign Bradward confirms that Gary Mitchell's memory alpha page did in fact survive the website's destruction in 2269. Nice. An escort mission to Dalgana 4, a neutral planet with a Dalgana neutrality pack and Dalgana security requires all shuttlecraft to provide a secure landing code as well as an ion field that restricts comms and transporters. Even between Starfleet personnel features a Klingon shopkeeper who threatens to stab customers multiple times, aggressive blue children, an Anabaj murderer, Vindorian thief, and a full-on Andorian bar fight. I guess that five years after the Dominion War, all the Starfleet security officers are still dead. Meanwhile, a low-ranking and unimportant engineer decides to have a change of career and gets more dedicated one-on-one -on -one training, advice, and respect from the most senior members of every field than I have had conversations of any kind with all of my college professors combined. You know, just for the people here who insist Lower Decks isn't Starfleet enough, because they apparently miss the whole business with Mariner and the Ferengi as well. There you go, Beckett. You deserve this one. The crew of the USS Cerritos uncover a horrific conspiracy regarding the senior officers in Starfleet, as every single member of the senior staff on that ship has had their background and service records completely fabricated, and they are in fact complete fictions. After all, if they really did serve on other vessels as low-ranking officers, then how could they possibly be unaware of the practice of buffer time, a lower decks tradition? Changing's not real, the Dominion War didn't happen. Also, Bradward is actually just me in this episode. Overbearing mother exploits position to torture daughter into quitting a job she loves and is great at. Later puts the lives of not just one, but two crews in jeopardy to bicker and nitpick at how her daughter saves the day. Is rewarded with commendation. Also, The universe is balanced on the back of a giant koala! Why is he smiling? What does he know? Beckett Mariner, winner of the Best Friend of the Universe Award, spends the day ruining her best friend's date by constantly harassing his girlfriend under the belief that she is somehow a fake imposter because, and I quote, Barb is way, way, way out of your league. In the utopian 24th century, I'm just gonna... Ah, uh, this right here. There we go. Also, Kirk Sunday with Trip Tucker Sprinkles is amazing. And also, also, I got you something. Oh, look, I stole a bunch too! Rutherford and Tindy are just the best. Once they figure things out with those aliens, they'll probably have a spacewalk to get everything cataloged. Uh, spacewalk? Really? Well, why can't we just use the- Oh sh! it's the Badgie episode, everybody! This is the best episode in the entire franchise! Okay, okay, no. No, we've got- we've got to explain this one. Um, hang on, hang on. Um, <clears throat> Engineer attempts to impress cute crush by showing her his unfinished passion project. Ends up on a life-threatening and exhausting adventure being chased by a murderous and gruesome glorified paperclip. Ends the date by killing his son. Meanwhile, lovable but hopeless Ensign lies about workplace accident, endangering crew, accusing co-workers, and risking starting a war. Ends up declaring war by destroying a cargo ship. Gets promoted. Man, the Titan is a nice nod, too. It's great to hear a bit about one of those amazing beta cannon ships that will never get its time to shine in alpha cannon. Wait, what? Young man volunteers for dangerous and unfinished science experiment to impress visiting superior, is horribly disfigured, and is forced to travel on a creepy ship where he immediately betrays his fellow crewmates, who then try and kill him while his friend is busy walking her... dog? Orwellian space mummies confuse a simulation of Peter Capaldi and... what? what's that? Yeah, Veritas. Not that one. 
Are you sure? That one's called Extremis and not Veritas. Oh, okay. Um, uh, hmm. Let's see. Uh, ah, here it is. The crew of the Cerritos visit Sideways Earth and absolutely ruin a celebration party for their bosses, while almost getting themselves killed in the process. They do make a good speech about Starfleet and the franchise, though, so all is forgiven. And yes, go ahead and look at it. That is, in fact, Sideways Earth. There's Sideways India, Sideways China, and Sideways Japan right there. Mother berates daughter for freeing a slave class of people being raised as livestock, as therapy goes on murder spree, savagely killing simulations of her friends, co-workers, and entire crew like they were the population of Whiterun and she was anybody I knew in high school. Seriously though, back in high school almost everybody I knew would relieve stress by murdering the entire population of specifically Whiterun in Skyrim years after the game was popular. None of them even knew anybody else did it until it just came up one day. And as someone who has never murdered anybody in Whiterun, it was actually really unsettling, and I just want more people to know about this. Oh, hi there. You thought you were watching a light-hearted comedy and not the best serious installment of Star Trek since at least 2005. Well, that's nice. Anyways. It's the time! Mike McMahon stealth turns in a promotion request for Alex Kurtzman's job. <laughs> wow, that's, this joke uh, aged poorly because it was just announced today is contract was extended, but whatever. Mike McMahon turns in stealth promotion request for Alex Kurtzman's job by creating tense stakes, a death that didn't put us to sleep, visually canonizing the Titan, stealth bringing back Riker and Troy, admittedly after Kurtzman did it in a less awesome way, revealing how much he got us to care about our relationship by making me tear up rather than check my phone, and bringing back Badgie, a character he created and has instantly become one of the best in the franchise. I'll be honest, this paragraph didn't start as a diss on Kurtzman, but between Lower Decks, Discovery, and Picard, guess which one I'm actually looking forward to coming back. G came back. B because, um, pre-recording. It takes like a month to do these, cut me some slack. Ah!